Hey guys, I'm E, and recently I released a video where professional basketball videographer extraordinaire Peter Sorellis took us through a step-by-step -step edit of a basketball Instagram reel. In that video, we learned about in-camera transition effects, stabilization effects, overlays, and basketball edits in general. And of course, there's a link to it in the description below. But since the video was over 30 minutes long, I decided to cut it down into shorter versions, each one dedicated to one effect or one technique from the original video. So what you're about to watch right now is one of those cut downs fully dedicated to Peter's technique when using overlays to style his Instagram edits. Take it away, Peter. Now we've got all of these clips keyframed so that they stay within the frames. We've stabilized, we've speed ramped, we've done our in-camera transitions. All that we have left to do now is add our overlays. I'm not gonna go over color grading in this tutorial, by the way, because that would just be way too much for all of this. I've already given you so much information. I know this tutorial is running super long. So if you wanna do a color grading tutorial, maybe I'll do it in the future. Maybe you can check it out on E's channel. I'm sure Beyond the Game TV is gonna drop a color grading tutorial soon for this type of stuff. But I can always come on and do another part if that's something that we wanna do. But for now, let's go and look at our effects and overlays. So I've dragged in some of my favorite overlays here. And what I normally do when I'm starting the overlay process is I grab one overlay that looks something like this, where it just kind of lightly changes colors. And I'm gonna add this over the entire clip just so that I have like a color changing and exposure changing effect that I don't really need to animate much. So if that doesn't make sense, I'll show you what I mean right now. Let's take this clip, I'll drag it over my entire sequence. We'll scale it up so that it all fits. And let's cut it off at the end here. I'm gonna change the blend mode here to linear dodge add. I usually use additive blending modes like screen or linear dodge add when I'm adding overlays. I find that this works best and gives me the most appealing result. And obviously we don't wanna play this back so intense you can barely even see what's happening because this clip is just like so, so full of noise. So let's turn the opacity here down to like 8% maybe. And now when you play the free, you can just see there's like a little film flicker over top of the entire thing. And it's like slightly changing colors, but it's not too noticeable. And I really like that. I usually use an overlay in this type of way on every single one of my videos. It's actually Shorten this up. And again, just like how we had to do a lot of tweaking when we were doing the in-camera transitions, you need to do a lot of tweaking when you're adding overlays. A lot of it is just like adding an overlay and then not being happy with it and then adding a different overlay. So it's really a bit of a tedious process, but it is worth it and you just kind of have to stick with it. Let's add some more video tracks. Let's just add five video tracks. There we go. And now let's scroll through this and see where else we can add an overlay. Maybe on this transition here to kind of distract from the fact that we're holding on the basket and you're seeing like nothing for a few seconds here, we can add like some sort of clutter or like transition overlay. So let's go into this film clutter folder and we'll just see what we have here. I'm not sure what all of these are. I usually just click on a whole bunch of them and see which ones I like. But right now I'm looking for something that's gonna wipe over the frame and distract you from the fact that you're looking at this random frame of empty for a few seconds. That's not bad. Let's try that. So we'll bring that in. We'll go over here. Let's rotate it 90 degrees so it's the same orientation as our composition and we'll scale it up to fill. Change the blending mode to linear dodge add. And let's see what this looks like. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Maybe because it ends on white, we can actually take it, reverse it. And now we have two frames of white here and then it comes off. So let's put this middle part where the transition of the two clips happens. And then we have that little flash transition there. That's kind of nice, I like that. We still need an overlay to kind of fill this part of the frame where you're just looking at nothing. That's not bad. They kind of blend in with the first overlay we used actually. So I kind of like that. We'll do the same thing we did for the other clip. Scale her up and linear dodge add. 
I'm just going to disable these two overlays for a second because I want to see where the white parts are on this and cut some of them out because they seem unnecessarily long to me. Yeah, that kind of works. So let's do that. We wanted to start this. The ball is in there you, and as of right here, you can't really see anything. So we'll put those overlays there and then we'll turn on our little transition overlay that we made. That's pretty good. So I'd use these overlays to create like a little distraction during this kind of unsatisfying part of the video. So you see the ball go in, it happens, and then you get overlays to distract you into the next part. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll also place overlays on areas of emphasis. So here I've got the ball in slow motion. So maybe I can place an overlay while that is happening to show that like you're focusing on the ball since it's kind of like creating anticipation with the ball being in the air and slow motion. So let's grab, I'm sure that I have like a film burn or something here that I can use. Yeah, sure, 16 millimeter burn transition. Let's just use this for the sake of time since I know this tutorial is crazy, crazy long right now. So the slow motion starts here and then it comes off. So let's uncheck uniform scale. And we're gonna rescale this so that it fits the dimensions of our composition, just like that. Let's change the linear dodge add. And now when we play this through, we get that. Can't say I was in love with that. We're gonna need to tweak this a little. What does overlay look like? I think it's kind of light. It's a hard light does. Oh, it's a little. I didn't like this black flash at the start. That was weird. Let's get rid of that. Maybe we're gonna keep this on overlay. Yeah, that wasn't bad. So I'm actually gonna use the ripple trim tool and this, uh, this drags your clips shorter or longer without actually changing the frames that's in it. It just makes everything either slower or faster. And we're gonna drag this out to just take a little bit longer time since the slow motion kind of starts here and ends over here and it doesn't cover the entire thing right now. So let's do that. I like that and I just don't want it to kind of suddenly come in and come out. I want there to be something that kind of Pop, pops and covers the frame when it comes in and then pops and covers the frame when it comes out so that it looks more seamless when this transition comes on. So let's take our old damaged film with light leaks, like the one that we used to create this the random color changes and let's find a part where it makes a quick change in color like that. We're gonna drag that over the top part here. Let's actually make it the proper orientation and we'll scale it down. There we go, that's perfect. I will change this to linear dodge add, but this time I'm actually gonna leave the opacity at 100. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna keyframe it up and down, kind of like how we did for speed ramping. So we're gonna change the opacity here both ways. And then I'm gonna hold, hold command or control, depending on if you're on Mac or PC, add some keyframes. And now it's gonna kind of come on, create like a flash and then this comes on. And then we'll option drag this to duplicate it, put it in the middle of the end of our little transition overlay and then command r minus 100 to reverse it and now we're going to get the same effect in reverse to bring our little overlay off and now when you play this through you get a flash this overlay comes on and it flashes off and you get that little that little shot going in now we have one more place right here where we can add a little bit of a transition because that's kind of jarring. So let's grab this film burn here. It's just this one. And this is just a little burn that comes across the screen and then goes away. So we're gonna take this and mark the start and end points. This is kind of the start here, then the burn goes. And by this point it's over. So we'll click O, drag this onto our timeline. Obviously this is far, far, far too long. So let's change the orientation so that it fills our screen. There we go. And now we're gonna use the ripple trim tool. I hope I'm calling it the right name. The rate stretch tool, apologies. We'll use the rate stretch tool 
to make this much faster so that the part that's fully white, which is right here, is over top of the transition of these two clips. Put that right there. And then we're gonna mesh with the blending mode again. Let's go linear dodge add. And that kind of looks like that. I think there's like too many frames of white in the middle. So I'm actually just gonna add a cut here. Let's go to this frame of white and add another cut. And we'll make those meet at the middle. And now you get this little flash transition and you're into the next clip. And then it wipes and goes back to the start. Maybe let's add a couple more frames onto this. Maybe take one off. As you can see, this is a process of tweaking. Like you need to just tweak stuff over and over and over and really take your time with this effect to get it to a place you like. But fortunately, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm gonna do some sound design and some color grading, not in this tutorial, but I'm just gonna do it to finish this clip off since this tutorial is too long for me to go through that entire process. And then you can see the finished product of our hard work here editing. If you enjoyed this editing lesson from Peter, make sure you visit his YouTube channel where there's a ton of similar content. Otherwise, I strongly recommend that you take a look at the first collab we did together if you haven't already. That one is fully dedicated to filming basketball for Instagram and is critically acclaimed by the sports videography community, which is a Facebook group that I run. But anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. Go follow Beyond the Game TV and Peter Sorellis on Instagram. And once again, I hope I earned the privilege of your time.